Hey all, this is uh, the Freak Beat CDM podcast and this is Johnny Walker coming back with another episode, episode 213. On this occasion we have a special guest back with us, Sweats from Chicago. What's going on everybody? Did you have a hot summer? <laughs> the, uh, it, it was hot. Uh, for me, it was a busy summer. I'll just say that. it was a b- busy summer. Lots going on. Lots of chucking and jiving. Well, I brought you here because we have some. Well, I need your expertise just to be truthful. Yes, you know, to, to our I, listeners. I, I know I, everything. I need your expertise because you're a musician, um, and this is going to tie up with a with a theme of the podcast, which is basically a lot of drama that is happening in the U.S. dubstep scene. A lot of things have happened last weekend. Basically, DM Twitter just went mad. We're going to go into all these juicy details. But before we start, I just want to um, ask you what you have been doing from a musical point of view, uh, just to update our listeners, and uh, then we're going to get into the main part of the podcast. Yeah, sure. I think this year for me, it's just been um, a a time of reflection for where I want to go musically maybe some talents that I that I haven't fleshed out in the past I'm I'm currently working on and stuff and uh I think I think I've needed this this year for a while to kind of you know take some chances do something do some things a little differently and then hopefully next year I'll actually be able to like sit down and fully execute in a vision and a style for an album and uh and have it lead the charge and have it really be the theme for my new year going into uh, 2023, but I've been releasing a, a few songs here and there, and uh, just you know just having fun and and just still working on the craft, man. Anything new in the Chicago music scene that happened over 2022 or this summer? Uh, there's a lot of festivals going on right now. Arc Music, uh, I think Arc is a house. Uh, festival that's going on and then north coast festival as well very big edm festivals going on here in the city i myself am just home uh working and then uh just working on uh on my songs and you know working on uh building up my social media presence so i i won't be at those festivals unfortunately but uh who knows maybe in the future and where can people find you at Sweats Music on IG, TikTok as well, uh, and YouTube, at S-W-E-T-Z, yeah. YouTube, yeah. Okay, right. guys, check Sweats out. He's been with us uh, for a few podcasts uh, before, and I featured in one of his podcasts before, so um, I really like his music, so do check him out. But let's get to the main drama right now. Before we get to the big, big drama, we're going to talk about something that really scary that happened a couple of weekends ago and that was in a base US festival and in particular base canyon 2022 for those of you who don't know what base canyon is is another it's a big festival a base festival that was started by excision and we're gonna discuss about excision later on that was established in 2018 it returned this year with the fourth edition but the festival almost didn't happen because and as you can see if you if you listen to the audio please do go on odyssey and watch the video there because it's much so much easier to actually follow what's going on with a lot of screenshots and and tweets we're gonna have future but basically the police in ground county in washington believe they may have stopped a mass shooting on friday night on august the 19th during the base canyon music festival at the gorgie amphitheater Am I pronouncing this well, Gorgi? Beautiful. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. You're talking about Georgia? Is it Gorge, Gorge, G-O-R-G-E? G-O-R-G-E. Anyway, Gorge, yeah, 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 you're right. Gorge. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people, people know about it. So the county sheriff's department later identified the suspect as a 30, 31-year-old Jonathan Moody from a town called Ephrata. Uh, witnesses said they saw Moody inhale an unknown substance or gas from a balloon. What do you think of that? Is that laughing gas? That's the Joker's laughing gas, man. It <laughs> it, it psyched him up, man. Before, yeah. you know, 
and inside his car before loading two 9mm pistols. Whoa. With one pistol concealed in the rear of his waistband and the other in the outside the waistband holster, Moody then be- began approaching concert goers, asking what time the concert ended and where people would be exiting the venue. Hmm. So I'm not sure what this guy was thinking. Like you're walking around with pistols, and look, man, you you I'm think a... people are just gonna just take it as it is, you know, take it okay and not do anything about it. So obviously, uh, some people thought they would talk to the authorities. So the security detained him outside the venue, so he never actually entered. He was arrested on suspicion of one count of possession of a dangerous weapon and one count of unlawful carrying or handling of a weapon and they put him to jail. Now the first night of this festival was sold out, he had a crowd of over 25,000. Uh, Grand County authorities thanked the concert goers who reported Moody as well as on-site security for keeping the man from getting inside the concert venue and the Grand County Sheriff's Office says remember if you see something say something. So uh, just to remind people, this is a three-day EDM festival in concluding on Sunday, August 21st. No shenanigans. The 2022 lineup included headliners like Excision, Subtronic, Sudden Death, Dion Timmer, G. Jones, and Woolley, among others. But earlier uh, this month, Elo Lapalooza, which is a... Is, is it not in Chicago? I think it's... It is in Chicago. Again. Security guard was arrested after allegedly faking a mass shooting threat in hopes no of way. getting off work early. <laughs> oh, dude. So, Man, he just should have he just called in sick. I exactly. mean, you're doing I mean, too much, bro. It's Damn. too much, isn't it? I mean, what the hell? What the hell? Anyway. Just tell, uh, me, tell him you had COVID. <laughs> exactly. You know, just fake a test or something. Anyway, I have I have a uh, tweet here. You can see some people body slamming. Let me play this for the viewers and listeners. I'm not sure this is my kind of. I guess plur or fun. I mean, body <laughs> slamming. I don't know what to say. Do you think it's like a healthy way of just uh, um, having fun? Uh, stress relief, man. Stress it's, relief. It's, it's, that's therapeutic. <laughs> you reckon, huh? <laughs> do, 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 have you ever sl- body slammed someone? I'm do trying you... to avoid this thing just in case, you know. <laughs> I just find it a little bit too aggressive i mean i'm a you know i'm a heavy person and i you know a poor guy Dude, you can somebody... lay the smack down bro what you can lay the smack down on somebody but, but that's what i mean i mean i'm not there to do smack downs <laughs> and stuff am i <laughs> i'm just there to shuffle and groove you know <laughs> no you're a you're a true player warrior man peace love <laughs> unity and respect exactly and I, I just have to laugh at the tweet that base can you put the first night and it says, Base Canyon fam, day one was a blast. It was almost a blast, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that, I don't it, think that was the best of tweets there, you know, with, with, <laughs> with what happened. Cool. Oh, uh, man. Let's no, get, man, look, man. Let's look, if I the, may. Sorry. Uh, if I may, to make a comment. Listen, the only person that can do wield pistols and have it be a good time is Laura Croft, Okay. This guy, who, who you know, who was planning something nefarious, was an amateur, and uh, and good on the law enforcement for keeping a watchful eye and taking this joker in. Exactly. I mean, yeah, Lara Croft. I, I agree with you, but I mean, he was truly a joker. But I don't know what about the other Lola Palooza guy. What was he thinking? Seriously. Oh, uh, he was he, he 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 sniffed that balloon, bro. The you same think thing he that the other the balloon dude. As well? dude, something funky in that balloon, bro. Is there some epidemic or something with this laughing gas? Oh, dude, it'll make you, man, it'll make you go crazy. Okay, okay. Well, let's continue with the main feature of this podcast, right? And the drama that happened last weekend on Twitter, 
on EDM Twitter, I guess. And this is between an artist called Getter, who came out on Twitter to support another artist called Space Laces, but this then got another dubster um, based artist called Slushy, and Excision fits in all of this somewhere. So just keep on listening, we're gonna give you all the juicy details. Uh, so for those who do not know who Getter is, he's, he's quite a famous um, dubstep, I would say, or future bass artist. And actually, if you're a fan of the podcast, you may remember that we did a future back in episode 103, which aired in April 2019, uh, with title The Visual 2 Cancelled. So what happened is, get a start in his tour, and that, that affects you, by the way, Sweats, because you're an artist. So he started his tour... He was playing, you know, hard dubstep up to that stage. But then he made a musical kind of switch, which I guess it's his rightful decision, right? Change Mm -hmm. in artistic direction. And then he was booed by his fans because the fans obviously went in the festival or in the show with an expectation of listening to his, you know, what they were used of. But yeah. then they got something completely different. So he was put, and then he cancelled his visceral tour. And we did a feature back then, me, myself, and uh, my co-host back then, Psychis. Um I mean, that was kind of, we discussed this in detail. We're not going to go through, you know, that, that debate, because for anybody who's interested, they should go. We have a link here on our Substack post. You can go back and listen to episode 103 for details. Now... Have you heard of Space Laces? I have not heard of Space Laces. Cool, so let me fill you in. So Space Laces is a guy who's part of the bass or dubstep scene. Um, He broke into the scene in 2018. His name is Ian Slider. Uh, He became quite famous for a few tracks, one of them called Digital Gangster. Throwing Elbows, that was a collaboration with with, um, uh, Excision. Fang Banker with Bro Safari, another one, another one called Rumble with Excision as well, and then he released his own stuff in a sort of mini mix called Voltage 0010032 and 003, which came out last year in March 2021. And this particular is of interest uh, later on. Now, going back to Getter. So I made this intro to Space Laces for our listeners. For anybody who's listening in the U.S., especially California, I'm sure they know everybody much better, way better than me. Now, Getter, when you look at his Twitter feed, he seems to be in a little bit of a funk. Because back in August 15th, all of a sudden, he comes and says, Man, I gotta stop being so nice and forgiving to people I work with. Nine out of ten times, they always find a way to fuck me out of some bullshit. If you're just getting into the music biz, don't think think everyone, everything's real. 99% of them just want something from you. Know your worth for, I guess. What do you think of that? Well, the fur, the FR, that's uh, short for for real. Oh, for real. Uh, okay. Yeah, but... Uh, He's yeah, you're right. He's he's in a funk, and he's not in. Uh, it's not the good funk. It's not the uh, the funk that yeah. uh, we partake here on the podcast. Yeah. Um. But no, I mean, obviously, he you know he's seen a thing or two in the music business, and you know it, those are his experiences, and I'm sure that that there's lots of truth to that. So, mm, but I think you know when I went back to his Twitter feed, and I guess you know I didn't pay attention to this particular tweet. Um, it has like 1400 likes it seemed to be out of sync with the previous one so all of a sudden he seemed to be triggered but obviously he didn't say what triggered him right Mm -hmm. so perhaps that was an indication what was about to happen so the Base Canyon festival happens as we said earlier and as I said this is organized the main organizer is Excision which is the biggest name in the US dub scene let's say the granddad Mm-hmm. And the decision comes out, and he says, put out a tweet that says, thank you to all the artists and handbangers for aging with us all weekend. Base Canyon 2022 was amazing. See you at Lost Lands and Thunderdome. These are his other two festivals. So, Geta comes out to respond to that. It says, damn, you're still ripping off space laces, man. That shit's sad. 
So he continues, being inspired enough to make a song that's similar is one thing. I mean, shit, that's how genres are created. But to blatantly pay another artist to make a rip-off of somebody else's unreleased song is pure evil in my opinion. Well, that was it. Mm. All hell broke loose afterwards. So you have a split now. Half of his fans, who possibly don't like Excision, they start supporting him, saying stuff like, Space Laces and Dion Timmer ghost produced for Excision. So what you're saying is most definitely true, lol. They seem to know about this as a fact, that both Space Laces and Dion Timmer, which is another artist, uh, dubstep artist, uh, ghost produce for Excision. The other half, which is the Excision half, says they came out raging, saying stuff like, maybe you should start ripping space laces so that people don't boo you off stage. That has to do with the earlier <laughs> thing that I mentioned from 2019. Mm. And Geta says, answers that at least my work is honest. This MF, we know what that stands for, rips off <laughs> up and coming artists simply because he can. What do you think? Oh man. I mean, when you're, th when you're that big, I mean, no one's going to tell you no, you know, because if they tell you no, well, you probably uh, close off a lot of opportunities if you were to say yes. So. I mean, this guy is, is, is controlling the three biggest dubstep festival. As far as I know, please correct me if I'm wrong, in the U.S. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So there's a, there's a power dynamic differential here, right? Yes. So now Getter continues and please all, I, I, I urge you to go and watch the video and I urge you to go and read the Substack blog because we have all the links to the tweets, to the relevant tweets. So Getter continues with some evidence for his claims. So to make his point, he puts side by side a video that compares Excision Titan um, with the unreleased track from Space Laces Voltage 3. So let's listen to it for a second. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to them, but to me, I did. they look pretty similar. They sound, oh, sorry, dude. they sound pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, dude, there, there's an uncanny resemblance between the two. I know. Let's just I say mean, that. I mean, the sound construction there of that, it's not a bass, really. It's like between a bass and a lead, you know, the mm -hmm. thing that sounds very kind of electric. Um, yeah. It's exactly the same. I think the arrangement is a little bit different, and if you listen actually to the beginning of the of the track, it sounds with a house beat. So this is a collaboration between Excision and Wooly. It, it starts like with a four to four uh, beat, and then it goes into what you just heard. But the main feature of the track, which is this bass, the sound design is exactly the same like what you hear in Voltage from Space Laces. Yeah, it really is, dude. <laughs> well, that's why I it thought, really but, is. you know, I, I just wanted, you know, another another kind of neutral party that you are. So, Excision yeah. now makes a rebuttal on Twitter. So, he says, Space Laces is an absolute legend who is amazingly talented at creating unique sounds. If you listen to the Get a Track with him, Choppers, it sounds like Space Laces. Space Laces sounds uh, will dominate any collab he makes because they're dope as fuck and then he says titans the song in question is a collab between Wooly and i the title track for our ep titans entirely made in my studio our inspiration for this track was mirror my collab with dion from 2016 both titans and mirror are 128 bpm house tracks that go half time so he kind of says basically you're fake you're talking shit right this is my track Space Laces, yeah, I acknowledge him, but basically shut up. So he <laughs> he then, after this, um, 
I'm not sure whether you heard this, but I played for the listeners. He posted a kind of voiceover where he says on Twitter, and you can again check the link on on the blog, on the Substack blog. I heard you want attention on Twitter. Maybe get a get a your facts straight. Get your facts straight before you talk shit. Now go back under the bridge you crawled out from. So I'm gonna play this. This is really funny. This is like thrash metal anthrax, right? Yeah. It seems like he's having a little bit of fun with them in this. I, I think he's a ex metalhead, this guy. And and this is my problem a little bit with the dubstep scene, you know, it's too much rock oriented, but hence the body slumps, I guess. But <laughs> yeah. but but I'm not gonna go there. Let's uh, continue. Yeah. Anyway, this this guy really smashed him there, I think. So Wooly came on and he says, getting tagged in some wild things today. Just want to say that all of the Excision X Wooly songs, the collabs, have been made together in the his studio in Canada or over Zoom. And usually always ends up with me trying to convince him Ableton better than FL Studio, even though he makes dope sounds in FL Studio. So, fine. So we have a formal response there by Wooly. And then Geta said, and Wooly. You're a punk for allowing that shit as well. Blown away that you, of all people, would let that happen. There seems to be kind of an internal discussion, like almost they have factions there. This is what I get. I, I don't know what you're thinking. I know you're mm-hmm. neutral to this, so what are you thinking? I'm thinking that, yeah, there's there seems like there's some underlying tension between these two. All right, maybe there have been DMs that have been sent between these two before. Mm. Well, unfortunately, Wooly was not in the best of positions or situations right there. So he answers back, says, gonna leave it as at, at this. Had a talk with Geta and even showed him the final version of that song. He even agrees it doesn't sound like Space Laces. He knows I had to say goodbye to my dad this week who's about to pass away. I got more important shit than getting dragged into messy EDM drama. I didn't want this to get personal. I'm fucking overwhelmed. Just leave me out of this shit for real. Please, and then he continues to his fans, please don't use this as an excuse to now turn on Geta. I still respect him as an artist. He's extremely talented. I think it's just misguided frustration. I have love for everyone, including the amazing community, reaching out when your boy is hurting. I honestly am most grateful for you. So, really bad timing, I think, from... Uh, yeah, Le- leave Wooly alone, please. He's leave Wooly he- alone. Leave, hash- put a hashtag before that. Leave Wooly alone. Okay, All right? let's, let's, start a, let's start a viral hashtag. <laughs> leave Wooly let's alone. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Now, now the drama continues. All of a sudden, right, while this is one conversation that is happening, Slushy comes in, right? So Slushy is another one of those DJs um, that more or less belong to the same scene, but he has perhaps a little bit of a lighter sound. Yeah. So he says on Twitter, while we're airing tea, bucket-headed DJ telling me not to play the edits and songs I made, in capitals, because he wants to play them in his set instead. Shit fuck me up for a long time. Now, mm. for those who don't know, bucket-headed DJ is Marshmallow. Now, what do you think of this? Like, he made the edits, but he can't play them because the main DJ wants to play them. <laughs> um, Man, that's a tough one, man. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, it really just depends. Are you willing to to, to bend the knee to to your peer or and someone who, I mean, I would say that Marshmallow is bigger than Slushy, so you never know. If you cross paths with them, 
and not the right wrong not in the wrong way i mean that could close off a lot of collaborations and lucrative deals but you could like i mean i don't know very tough situation for slushy i i personally don't know what i would do keep my integrity or sell my soul sell your soul <laughs> so, so. I mean, he has three, col two collaborations, right? And uh -huh. and he remixed Marshmallow's really biggest or breakout hit alone. So True. it's not like the strangers, but it would piss me off big time. And he obviously yeah, fucked it, him up for a long time. If if they knew each other, like I mean, I don't know how well they these two know each other. I mean. Obviously enough to make a remix or whatever. Um, but I don't know. Why would you go put that on Twitter? Why wouldn't you at least send a, a DM if you really had a problem with it? Well, I guess he found the, the opportunity, right? Because he said, you know, as we're airing as we're airing tea here. So he found the opportunity. He obviously followed the discussion that was happening between Excision Space Laces and Getter. And then no. he jumped on the bandwagon. But that was completely unexpected by the community. Like, the community yeah. completely lost their mind at that stage. Yeah, it, I mean, it's kind of like some, like a, a girl or a woman is screaming at her boyfriend that's cheating on her as he's getting kicked out the house. And then I come over, I'm the next door neighbor, and I come over and said, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to jail for... Uh, for, for bashing in my 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 neighbor's car it's like where that doesn't apply to the uh the spouse that's cheating you know it's just yeah. uh kind of out of nowhere i don't know if yeah. that's the best analogy but <laughs> 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 so guys we have a poll here on our on our substack blog go and check you know go and vote is it slushy or mellow who who do you who do you um rate here to continue Marshmallow for you, huh? Okay. Yeah, Slushy just, he's just, no one cares about the, the car that you just damaged, <laughs> Slushy. Just stay out of it. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, What's So Not, which is another artist, he comes on Twitter as well, and he tweets the following. Yes, you wouldn't believe the artists that don't make their own music. Some of the biggest, the god tier ones. Shady deals and manipulations, always of the smaller artists or writers. Collabs that nearing release suddenly have the actual creators' names dropped off. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, like if 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 I mean, he's talking about god tier artists, right? Yeah, to I mean. DJs. I, yeah, and like they could like be like, oh yeah, let's collab to this smaller artist, and to the smaller artist, like, dang, this is really awesome. But then at last minute, just like get kicked off. I mean, it's really not, it's not a good thing to do. But I mean, it, is there any like really any repercussions to those god tier artists that do that? I mean, well, not really. This is where NDAs come in and for those who don't know what NDAs oh, yeah. are it's non-disclosure agreements basically you sign a contract saying you're gonna do X or Y or Z but you're not gonna say anything that's part of the contract we pay you for that well I well yeah go on I, I mean I was gonna say that I mean that if if you're signing the contract and you've read it and you fully understand and you know that you're gonna produce for this person but you're not gonna get any of the credit and you're okay with that you signed on the line. You understood what it was. You should have read it. Then I have no sympathy for you. You should have. That's business, man. If, that's if business. there is an NDA, though. If there is an NDA. If there is in, an in, NDA. In this case, we do not know what's happening. However, I mean, the, the, the issue of ghost producing, and for those who don't know, again, we have made a podcast about ghost producing. Uh, and you should go back and listen to our episode 14, believe it or not, in January 2017. Uh, Psyche is my co-host at that time was there big shout out to Psyche but go and listen to what Ghost Producing is in a few words the artists when they release tunes and tracks and songs and you think they recorded them they haven't it's somebody else who has done it some unknown artist or some small artist and perhaps they sign a contract that would be I guess the business option that Sweats just spoke about or Perhaps they did it hoping that it's going to be a collaboration and they're going to be credited and nothing happened at the very end. And that, that, that would 
piss me off and it obviously has with a lot with royalties and how people make money out of music we come back we're gonna come back to this at the very end but so space laces finally the, the main person here came out and tweeted my thoughts for the record I don't do any ghost producing so he says he doesn't right and I don't have any interest in ruining anyone's career all the songs I've worked on with Excision I'm a credited artist that being said I notice a lot of people trying to replicate songs of mine however much of that is a coincidence or confirmation bias I'll never know but I can't get mad for people taking inspiration on a good day it's flattering on a bad day it just feels like a broken record in an industry where I often feel disregarded or taken advantage of at the end of the day I just want the recognition for the work that I've done anything between me and Jeff Jeff is excision I'd rather handle personally and not in public that's professional I appreciate the friends who have my back and thank you for always sticking up for me I guess that's getter I appreciate it more than you could know so what do you think very I think spit well aside from excision space laces had a very very tailored well thought out response it wasn't to an anger i mean it's the complete opposite of what getter was doing the, the, <laughs> the complete opposite of what slushy was doing yeah. just like screaming out in the street what you know and whatnot <laughs> <How about> but, <laughs> yeah but i i like this is it was like i mean i mean whether it's true or not who knows but but i mean the, as far as the response goes i think you know what's the what's the phrase that I'm looking for? C cooler heads prevail. Yeah, space laces. Or, or political. Uh, or political, but then again, like if it's a if it's political, then it's 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 strategic. It's a yes. move that you do. You know, it's a chess game. All right. Yeah, and it took him two days to respond. So obviously, this was a well well thought and crafted response, right? It wasn't in the heat of the moment. So he just stood the way back. to go, man wait for things to cool down and then he, yeah. uh, he made his response however the drama doesn't stop here now he says very clearly and you can see this on the tweet he says I do not do any ghost producing so please listeners keep this in mind and sweat we're gonna continue so Monday comes and you think things will cool down correct because everybody goes back to their job and their office and and you know we just move on from all the fun on idiom twitter getter comes back again and he says what happens in the dark comes out in the light <laughs> i'm not sure what to make of with this tweet man uh, this... i i i saw so any any real uh argument aside i think getter is is kind of funny actually he's starting to i he... <laughs> I just find it funny <laughs> how he puts it. I it's think he's for real. This guy's really pissed off, right? I, mean, I even, believe even that. Even if you see his his Twitter uh, picture, I think he looks really pissed off. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he. I, I think he is genuinely pissed off. But it, it, if any other situation, I feel like he would be a good guy to sit down and have a beer with. So I don't necessarily have uh, a problem with Getter in this whole situation. Yeah. And you have an Excision fan that came and said, didn't Space Lacey say he wanted to handle this privately? Why are we still stirring the pot? This is just an ex-Excision hate page at this point. Mm. Now, we're going to Reddit. We're moving from Twitter to Reddit. Wonderful. Right. One so, cesspool to another. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> this guy, first of all, there's a tweet again. This guy, Corn, Corny Old Jeff, come out and tweets together as well as two other people I don't know some screenshots from a telephone conversation it's like from a messaging app so these are phone screenshots from a messaging app that's crazy now because we're gonna read the entire conversation for you guys to make for you to make up your mind obviously sweats I want your input here it's very important what what if I mean you could say no, but what if like you pretend to be Jeff and I could be Ian? Cool. So you have you have the screenshots <laughs> on you, right? So yeah. who, who am I? Am I Jeff or Ian? Am I the good guy or the bad guy? I'll I'll be Ian. So you be Jeff. So you're the talented musician and I'm the big 
<laughs> the big-headed guy who doesn't know shit about producing music, which sounds exactly like a real life situation. Correct? Okay, so let's take it off. Your your space laces, Ian, okay. and I am excision. Okay, so it starts off with sup, right? You're on the same page. Yeah. Sup, working on virus right now. Word. How's today's progress? Figured neck brace would be an easy last one. Pretty good. There was one moment, however, my power went out and corrupted a save. Only lost 30 minutes of work, though, lol. Gotta get one of those power uh, MG power management devices. How do you not have a battery power thing? I have one and the power never went out once in the two years I was using it. Wow. <laughs> it died before the power even went out once, lol. The irony is real. Dropbox link. Yeah. Drum mix and master chain. Took me forever to fix that goddamn stair. Next up, basses, and I'm going to fix the vocals if I have time tomorrow. That the wish changes. Dropbox link. Let me know if that passes inspection. Virus, you lost way too much of the crash that hits on each of the big half note bass tabs on the drop reference. Ah, okay. I did compress it quite a bit. So you want it more splashy and loud rather than constant? Yeah. Really impacting the half note. Get people head banking. Snare is a bit boxy sounding. So gotcha. what do you make? Of, what What do you make of this right now? I mean, what is what is Space Lace is doing with regards to Excision's music? Can you explain to the listeners? Okay. Well, first off, I mean, just as a comment on this chain as well, I don't know how we could validate and like confirm the actual uh validity of these threads so i i'm pers personally skeptical of that but assuming that they're real uh I, to be honest with you johnny and freak beats nation it sounds like he's talking about doing mixing mastering producing basically producing for him i mean i don't, I don't know other way to say it without getting too complicated i mean okay, okay. It, it sounds like he's doing work for this man yeah yeah i mean we'll see that later but uh he's doing some sort of production correct now do you yes. want to explain to the listeners who are not musicians like you what what does production entail like in electronic dance music or in music in particular like what does it involve what does it mean like the producer of a track the producer of the track well it would be a person that put plays in a, a significant part of the actual creation of the actual sound waves that is actually going to be sold or heard by other people so if it's people that that mix it that you know you know take one knob and lower it and take another knob and raise it up higher to level them out so one isn't more powerful than the other I have a person who does that for, I mean, extends extended period of time and puts in a significant amount of time, energy, and possibly money into the thing as well. That that could be considered a producer. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it, this is exactly the, like uh, not exact. I mean, I guess th 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 like if if I was to outsource mixing and mastering on Fiverr, this is like the conversation that I would have. Except the personal stuff. I mean, because that'd be weird. But like. Just kind of like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, how does this sound? Uh, sounds a little boxy or whatever. Can you fix this, do this, yada, yada, yada. Exactly the same thing that someone who is producing, who is helping me to produce uh, the, the song or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if that is, is a good explanation. but It does, yeah. it does. And, and to be honest, I think a producer plays a hugely significant part in... Like the success of a record, and never mind electronic dance music. Um, you probably know this, but like Quincy Jones, he was the producer on Michael Jackson's Three. Yeah. Right. I mean, Hell yeah. that sound, right? What we what we're listening as the final product is it does have the signature of Quincy Jones. It's it has its his magic. It's not like Michael Jackson, who's probably the writer. We don't know that, but we assume it's not that he's not talented, but that sound, that that compact, well-crafted, polished sound that came out right in 1984, it was Quincy Jones. He was the producer. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I, I do agree. I do agree because even if Quincy didn't 
even if Quincy didn't even know how to <laughs> to even raise or lower a mixing knob or whatever in the studio, I think just I it's hard to say when, but after a certain point when so much input is given from somebody, I, I feel like and again, it's complicated because you know, there's no like meter that you have to fill up and it has to pass a certain point on the meter. It's like, oh, well, you're a producer now. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. But I would say after a significant uh, portion of inputs, even if it's just verbal, just to give the artist and the person who's actually arranging and, and mixing and stuff like that, if, to give them um, enough feedback significant impact uh feedback to to um to actually uh, like alter the song uh significantly then i think that would count as a producer in in my opinion mm -hmm. i mean he's taking artistic directions obviously from from excision because you can see you know he's asking him, like do you like it splashy sound and he says you know no do this or do that shall we continue with the next screenshot so yes you continue Gotcha. Oh, right. I was going to ask. 1K per mix down sound fair? Yes. I was going to offer you 5,000 for the batch, not including whatever we said for Are You Ready? Ah, gotcha. How about 800 each? Minus feedback. So 6,400 in total? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, he's getting paid, right? So, there's obviously a business transaction here, correct? Yes. However, don't you think like Space Lace is once a thousand, he's off Excision is offering eight hundred? Yeah. It seems like maybe he's <laughs> being ripped off here. Come I'm on. Sure. Well, I, I mean that I mean that yeah, but like that's honestly the reality in a world where you're competing with so many other people, it's like Lowballing is a method of business that has been around like forever. Oh, the guy across the street is doing the same thing that I'm doing for a thousand. Well, I'll do it for nine hundred. Damn it! I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's just the reality of of a lot of business, to be yeah. honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue with the next uh, next screenshot. All right, A plus for effort. Should I fuck with? Are you ready more, or do you think that's done? Dropbox link. We got more important shit to do. It's fine. It's a B plus track, and there are others that are A A's in my opinion. Brothers spend our time on tracks that will get played more. Yeah, I'm really liking all this stuff. I guess don't uh, don't let Are You Ready be the benchmark for my ghosting skills. Oh my god. Uh, LOL. <laughs> Just let me know if you like it at 145 versus 140. It's a matter of five minutes. Ah, uh, 145. Well, is he not saying ghosting here? He, he's, he said the word. He said so, the word. If these are true, if these are true, he has said the word. Then... Now, now, just to offer some context, if you go on Twitter and you follow the, the, the discussion, people did have access to those Dropbox links um, that they stayed there for a very short time. And they could hear the tracks, and they they're saying that these are, you know, these are genuine tracks. Um, I don't know who uploaded them, but they could hear the similarity between the Dropbox production and what came out at the very end, what was kind of released. So we believe, as far as we know, that this this discussion is genuine, or somebody's like a mastermind of crafting, you know, stories and inserting Dropbox <laughs> links and and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, this no, guy is saying, don't let Are You Ready, the, the track, be the benchmark for my ghosting skills. That's that's pretty damning, man. He's ghost producing, right? <laughs> He's just that's... saying. And then yeah, on the dude. tweet, if you go above, right, what we said earlier, for the record, I don't do any ghost producing. Damn, son. He, he must have never done any lying before either because he's not really good at it <laughs> just kidding i don't know no but yeah if true if if proven to be true these uh these messages then 
uh, he lied. He lied, he lied yeah. big he time. He lied to his fandom, right? But again, it shows that probably this guy is scared. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, yeah, again, it goes back to that thing we were talking about before where it's like if you're going to have, let's just call Excision the god of dubstep, right? Yeah. Um, like, how are you going to say no to God? Like, who would be crazy enough to say, no, I'm going to do what I want to do and go screw yourself, eating dubstep God? Well, it like, takes it takes uh, balls and it takes you being getter of doing that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think maybe getter huff that balloon drug that's going around. You you reckon the laughing gas? <laughs> the joke yeah, and laughing yeah. gas. Yo, get her hit the the laughing gas, bro. Okay, let's let's continue with the next. I think you're starting. It's Ian who's talking. Okay. By the way, is Excision Music an S corp in the states? S corp. S corporation, kind of like an LLC. It's literally called Excision Music USA LLC. I know Brett handles most of the money, but do you pay a wage for yourself? Yeah. Or do you have to file for an occupational license? The trick is to keep a bunch in the company, and then when you retire, you pay yourself still so you can have a lower tax rate. Yee. I want to get mine set up before you pay me, because it'll be like 30 plus percent without it. I make technically under poverty level and pay in the top tax bracket. So stupid. LOL, if you want. Man, is Space Lacy, Space Lacy is struggling? Yo, sh any, any, uh, anybody, if you're uh, a sole entrepreneur, if you don't have an LLC set up, which in this case, he, it's, he doesn't, so he's a sole proprietor, and you're, uh, uh, you technically would fall under, uh, basically, if you work for yourself in the States, they're going to tax you up the ass, so he's not lying. I feel for, for space laces. But, I he mean, needs to get that LLC started up right that, That's quick. fine, but let's not go into business technicalities here. But, <laughs> yeah. but what, what I'm trying to say is this guy is getting paid less than he expects to, right? 200 yeah. bucks per track, per, per work. And he says that he's struggling. Now, Excision is a guy who's apparently, when I checked, his worth is more than a million. Man, throw him a, throw him a two extra hundred dollars for his stuff, Excision. Come on, man. You, what, times are hard? Wait, this, you, you weren't like, able to I buy a Bugatti? I don't feel for excision, man. I don't feel for excision. No, he has like the, he, he's like the front runner of like three major festivals, man. He's I fucking mean, up Space Lace. Throw him a bone. Time, right? Throw him a bone, man. Come on, bro. I mean, this guy says I make technically under poverty level. I would just hand him over like five grand. Yo, you know, take this five grand and go buy some new computer or something. <laughs> Dude, I, I feel for space laces, man. All right, man. Next, All right, Peter Wallet, one. man. Next one. Okay, let's go. Okay, so kick plus three decibels at 400 hertz, sub minus three decibels. Yeah, and limit slash clip about 2.5 dB. We'll do that. Uh, how you ain't hanging in there? Just want him to do the others, tired and hangry. I'm feeling the pull of sleep as well. Neck brace, lol. I should probably get something done on it tonight. I don't need feedback for the first few hours, so you're welcome to sleep. Okay. Yeah, get the grand work done so you have fresh ears on it for the final phase tomorrow. What nice. Oh, man. Under the power... Get, getting taxed as a soul... As a, as a sole proprietor and not be able to sleep. Damn. He's working Space really late. hard, right? He's Space Lace is going through it, man. And he's, he's begging for money. It. And, and Excision is like going and having a good sleep with his girlfriend. We're coming to that in a second. And like saying, yeah, go and do the groundwork, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he says. That's what he says. Let's let's be clear about it. That's what he says in a roundabout way. He doesn't use the word. Yeah, I'm excision. Get on your knees. Listen to my beats. Ooh, yeah. Man, if I was a fan right now, an excision fan, 
I would yeah. have lost complete faith in this guy. Like, oh, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with his festival. Let him feel a little bit of this poverty. <laughs> oh, dude, <laughs> poor space. Like, I'm, I gotta go listen to. I gotta listen to his music now. I gotta help him get over the poverty exactly, line. Yeah. Okay, guys, <laughs> this is a, a call to action for anybody who's listening. Go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever, uh, Apple Music, and. Put Space Laces music on repeat. Like, yeah, just leave it for the next seven days. Just play on repeat so this guy gets like five dollars out of it. Because yeah. that's what he's buy, gonna get. Buy some merch. Buy some merch. Buy some too. merch at least. Come on, man. This guy is a starving artist, man. Damn. You're feeling, yeah? Okay, next one. Uh, nice. Virus and neck brace still need more work. Gotta get Dean to help on this. Do you have updated versions? So I can get done faster but that's probably too much for you to mix by tuesday i can send one or two to freem let me see today is friday right whoa he doesn't know the day lol <laughs> lol <laughs> one per day doable you're just gonna have to be ava available for listening because sometimes what i hear isn't what you hear the technical fixes don't take more than four hours which uh, three will you have tonight? Yo. So. Got more stems for you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, space uh, space laces. Just say sup. Don't say sir. Stupid. Uh, word. Fire away. Is is. Okay. I'm gonna stay on topic. Word. <laughs> fire away. About a quarter done with with G shit. Dude, don't tell me he's not his bitch, right? Hey, I have another three for you tonight. <laughs> you know what? I, man, I, I I have a point that I'd like to make that mm -hmm. all this is, is kind of uh, lending itself to, but I'll, I'll wait till these uh, exchanges are done. and uh, Or should I say, say my piece now? No, no, no. Let's, let's just wait. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I have a question for you. So... Okay. Ian, Space Lacy says, from what I hear, isn't what you hear. The technical fixes don't take me more than four hours. What does he mean by that? What is the exact work that you think he's doing by by using, by saying the technical fixes? Well, probably just when it comes to, like, like they're also mentioning before, like, minus 3 dB on this frequency and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just the... Uh... I would say a lot of EQing, mm -hmm. compression, a lot of the the stuff that I don't like to do personally that that just irritates me. So um, is this is this mixing? Is this post production? Is it production? Is it mastering? It, it is. It is. It is. I well, technically, mixing happens throughout. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. just reserved for post production usually. Mm -hmm. But but I would I would categorize it as post production. EQing, compression, mixing, mastering, the works. Okay. Producing, producing. So if I did this for your a track of yours, would you credit me? And if so, as to what? Uh, I, I would credit you as a producer. Or a co-producer, right? Sure. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Now, let's continue. Uh, Dion, by the way, was Dion Time that, again, everybody knows. He's another one of those uh, dubstep artists. Let's continue with the next. Okay. By the way, Emma flies out tomorrow. I'll be home alone all week. Just gym for an hour each day. Oh, she's been with you? Question mark? Yeah, been with her since, like, Shambhala. LOL. Six-hour reach around... around What? Six-hour reach around makes sense. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Uh, the only two things people leave for six hours. Going to the gym plus family dinner later plus girlfriend gone all day. Uh, our school and work specifically six hours. Glad she's up there with you though. I'd get lonely in a big house by myself, even though I hate having roommates. Nice to have a girlfriend that you can actually spend time with IRL. Man, she's honestly amazing. Cooks, cleans, does the dishes remembers everything i forget she organizes my kitchen closets fix up the guest rooms bought new sheets for them like haha -ha, damn she gives a fuck uh sounds like a keeper that's great <laughs> on another level 
Actually, that's... And she respects and is grateful for what I do for her. <laughs> Super fucking rare. Man, here's, here's a picture of Emma. I mean, she cooks and cleans and does the dishes. That's the whole Monty, man. She's a keeper, definitely, right? Yeah, she's not bad to look at either. No, but... Um, I mean, I'm not going to comment on that. The f our female listeners can comment <laughs> on the on the good aspects of, you know, if a woman, but, if he rates the woman as, wow, she cooks and cleans and does the dishes, I, I let our understand. female listeners to hey. make up their own mind about that. I'll, that you, I mean, with those two things alone, that's a 10 out of 10, Johnny. Okay. Yeah. In my professional opinion. Yeah. So next, next, <laughs> and this is the last screenshot, and we're finishing this, well, conversation. Um, what? A, so, excuse me. Whatever you're feeling, man, they all gotta get done. So it doesn't matter. I guess that makes sense. Finish the easy one, so I can send them to people for final feedback. Yeah, I'm glad I slept for a lot eleven hours last night. <laughs> you kept track of the hours you slept. Got I'm gonna need it. <laughs> I slept for four. Die. The past couple of days, I slept four to five hours on the couch. Sucks so bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is really working hard, right? <laughs> man, look, man. Someone give a care package to <laughs> his space laces, man. He's struggling. He, man. Daddy Excision is not letting him off the hook, man. He has work to get done. So, I'm going to put this screenshot a little bit below for people um, to have a look. This is from a screenshot I took from Spotify. And it is okay. from the latest uh, single of Excision with Wooly, I think. Uh, yeah, that's called Name Drop. So you can see the credits here. So name drop says performed by Excision and Wooly, written by by Adam and Jeff, which is Wooly and Excision, produced by Excision and Wooly. Right? These are the credits. What would you make out of by performed? What what does performed mean for you? I would say it's whether you if you had lyrics that were that you spoke, I would mm -hmm. say that counts as one. But obviously, uh, I mean, uh, I think it obviously it, it could apply as well to like the other elements of a song. Um, I, I guess for electronic artists, it's a little a little different because it's not like just uh, it's not like a singer. But in, um, in your case, like with your music because you put lyrics and you sing your own lyrics and you do your own rapping right you you'd be yeah. one of the performers right yes and whenever you do these collabs that you do would the other guy be performing as well or would he be featured so would it be um, sweats featuring like your buddies um i think it would be featured to be honest although like you could make a case that it, I mean, you could put them as the performer as well, which, I mean, wouldn't really be a problem if I was going to feature them in the first place anyway. Um, that's a good question. I think, honestly, I, I, I always kind of, like, figured that feature, like, not to get into too technical of, of details, because, like, I upload my music to DistroKid, and, like, you can, like, you can... You can have these um, these credits. You can put in names for the credits. Um, I think featuring was always like it's, there's no thing. There's nothing that you could do for featuring in and of itself. You have to like put it on the title mm -hmm. of the thing. Well, written by I think I understand it. So I guess you chose the chords. You play some notes. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that as well. Okay. So let's say that I did the chords right and B minor and C major and whatever, and and you know uh, D fifth or whatever, and I put them together. Now, if you arrange them so you move things around uh, yes. on, on the track, what would that be? Would that be production or writing? I I think that would be production. 
production. Okay, so uh, after that, what about the sound design? So if I played like we read in these screenshots, like there's a lead, you know, I'm gonna start fucking around with the ASDR and the filters, <coughs> and and you know, I bring in oscillators and stuff. What would you consider this? I would consider a production. Okay. Now, below we have another credit, uh, this from a track between Space Laces and uh, Excision called Throwing Elbows, one of his biggest tracks, for those who know. And again, I took this screenshot from Spotify to keep consistency of the conversation. We just see performed by Excision Space Laces, written by, doesn't say, produced by, doesn't say. Perhaps mm -hmm. back then it didn't matter, I don't know. Now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Why all, is all these things are important? Because I think, like, if you're in a band, so imagine that you're in a four-man band, right? Yeah. The songwriters and the performers, right? So mm -hmm. you're the songwriter, like in the Beatles, you're Paul McCartney and John Lennon who basically write the songs and then you have George Harrison and Ringo Starr who basically don't write any songs but play the instruments right so their performance as you know and obviously the other two other performances as well the yeah. songwriters get from the royalties way more money than the performance so even though you're in a band of four mm -hmm. they're gonna get something like 70 or 80 percent of the royalties yeah. And this is why these things matter. Mm -hmm. And having been through all this and assuming that all these screenshots are for real, in my opinion, as a neutral fan looking from outside in, I think Space Laces is getting screwed. <laughs> unless, he you assigned, think? <laughs> unless he has signed an NDA, he's getting screwed. He's getting at you know, advantaged um, from Excision, who is the big daddy here, and he's probably not credited accordingly. He's probably doing ghost producing for him, and poor guy, I feel for him. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I'm just That's saying my honest too. opinion, dude. <laughs> Yo, I feel for you too. I feel for Space Laces too, man. I mean, now but... he has Space Laces, has gained two more fans. An excision, you can go and F off, right? <laughs> I'm just in your face, dude. In your face. Okay, because I don't depend on your fucking festivals, right? And neither does Sweats. So in your face, dude. Yeah, take that, jerk. Take that. <laughs> no, seriously, what's your opinion here? Oh, man. I mean, look, man, at the end of the day, if Space Laces is actually cool with it, I mean, but is he cool? We don't know that. We don't know if he's actually legitimately cool with it. Like, I would have to sit down and talk with Space Laces. Maybe we could work, maybe we could use the power of the Freak Beats Nation to work that out to where you we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I don't think this guy's going to come up, man. He's so shit scared. <laughs> he's shit scared of his career, man. <laughs> well, he's yeah. probably going to come up and suck on excision. <laughs> oh, 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 man. <laughs> Dude, uh, man. Hey, what about Slushy, places. man? What about Slushy? Slushy's still bitching and complaining about his the car that he just destroyed that he's proud of, and I, I, mean, I don't know. Marshmallow, man. He's, he says Slushy's making the edits, and Marshmallow, he goes out and says, "Hey, yo, don't don't even think of playing this. These are mine now. Okay, these are mine." It was an alpha move. It's an alpha move by Marshmallow. He's the alpha male. <laughs> it's very based. Very based, Marshmallow. And to wrap everything up, the biggest, <laughs> the best tweet of all that I've seen, because everybody had to say their own opinion, yeah. is from EDM Twitter, is this is this tweet by somebody. Since Lassi already aired out Marshmallow, just know Marshmallow doesn't even make his own music. Dot com has been ghost producing for Marshmallow since day one and has never been given credit for any of his songs. Now, this is funny to me. I don't think you know why he's saying that, though. I hope some of our listeners know why he's saying that. Okay. So basically, you know Marshmallow, he's the guy with a white yes. bucket head, right? Before he became Marshmallow, 
he was dot com. Yes. And he was completely like unknown and wasn't making any breaks in the scene. And then one day he decides to put a bucket head on him. He becomes a marshmallow and hey ho, he's huge, right? And this is why he says since last year already aired out Marshmallow, just no Marshmallow doesn't even make his own music. Dot com has been ghost producing for Marshmallow since day one. Obviously, <laughs> it's the same guy. <laughs> very funny. Very, <laughs> very funny. I tweet. guess it's an inner kind of joke, you know. <laughs> if you get it, you get it. But uh, I'm sure our listeners do get it. Well, thanks very much for coming and explaining those uh, music production nuances um, yeah. that I can't understand. But obviously, you're a season musician. You've produced and released your own music in your own le- record label. Um, so thank, really thanks for coming and, and sharing this because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to comment much more than just the facts. Oh, dude, it's always a pleasure to be on here, man. I, I actually have one more interesting point mm-hmm. to go along with uh, this, this matter of ghost producing, which I brought it was I mentioned earlier. I think it, it, it goes into, and maybe we could do this for another, another podcast, but Mm -hmm. I mean, really what, what you have to ask yourself, okay, so people are ghost producing. What, what, what does it mean to other things? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the consumption of music as a, as a product in, in today's age, you know, in this day and age. Uh, you, you like, there's this constant pressure on an artist to, just keep releasing music. I mean, look, man, the the the, the legend Cam Lasky. You know, he could do. It. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he puts out as much music as he does, as frequently as he does. But everybody is basically trying to be at that level of producing music because uh, it, it, it's just how how things are, the how consumption habits are in this uh, in this time and age, and so like. If you were the god, you are the supposed god of dubstep, and you can outsource some work to keep that consistency and to keep that cash flow going, you know what I'm saying? You have, I mean, you only stand to gain and to be at the top by doing so. So, like, what? why wouldn't you? You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's know, something that was interesting along with all this that was going through my head. I, I know what you're saying. I think the issue here is, is is moral and okay yeah you, you can do this but at least credit the other artist or if you sign an NDA for God's sake pay them well so the guys are not starving <laughs> right? this guy can't even afford the McDonald's he looks to me like. <laughs> seriously man. I feel Dude. for this guy guys again go go on your on your on your streaming and just keep things on repeat for Space Laces for until the next episode Space Laces non-stop non-stop Space Laces let's go I'm gonna do exactly that and remember until next time get your freak on oh yeah